When addressing the subject of functional plagiocephaly or cranial injuries or abnormalities at birth, it's important to remember that even the most subtle injury or trauma at birth really affects the cranium the most. That's why cranial abnormalities is something that we place a lot of emphasis on in this class and we've looked at the different types of functional plagiocephalies and patterns of dysfunction that can present themselves in your clinic. Now for yourself from a practical viewpoint you must learn to be able to discern or sense or feel with your hands as you palpate and as you assess where the areas of restriction are, where the areas of tension are, one area in relation to another, and specifically the cranium now, one area of the cranium in relation to each other. That might mean one cranial bone in relation to each other in the way they move within the cranial rhythm, but also one in relation to each other with regards to their sutures, which we saw a while back in the importance of releasing sutures. So this will come with practice. And just as we saw that there are various patterns of cranial injury that can present themselves, the most common injury is a compression of the anterior and posterior regions of the cranium. So releasing the frontal and the occiput are key to a lot of cranial molding that is necessary in functional plagiocephaly patterns that you will see. Also, releasing the vault or cranial suture will also be crucial. So we're going to review now a treatment protocol that addresses these priorities with regards to addressing functional plagiocephaly or cranial abnormalities when your goal is to induce cranial molding, to release the areas that are restricted, that are vital in terms of allowing the cranium to develop and form itself properly in a healthy way so that there are no restrictions that can impede blood flow or the membranes or therefore functioning and development of a healthy brain.